Hello, you've got your energy stories for this, the first week of April 2022. And the first one, New York independent system operator NISO said on March 29th that approximately 750 megawatts of additional behind the meter solar has been added over the past year, resulting in a record high of 2,238 megawatts of behind the meter solar output. That occurred during noon on March 22nd. NISO now puts the state's current total on-site solar capacity at about 3,500 megawatts and estimates that it will climb to 4,021 megawatts direct current by the end of this year and eventually increase up to 7,281 megawatts DC by 2030. That number may get a pretty significant boost in New York and elsewhere as a result of a significant commitment from commercial real estate developer Trammell Crow and solar company Altus Power to install solar panels on 35 million square feet of U.S. industrial property. Altus will install $600 million worth of solar on properties in Trammell's development pipeline while also investing in battery storage, EV charging, and other environmentally benign tech. The plan is to install 300 megawatts by 2026, and Trammell will get the rental payments from Altus for hosting the solar panels on its sites. However, these forecasts and proposed projects might suffer a pretty extreme haircut depending upon the outcome of the Department of Commerce's review of solar panel imports from Cambodia, Malaysia, Thailand, and Vietnam. The Department of Commerce has decided to respond to an anti-dumping petition filed by California-based module manufacturer Oxen Solar, who is seeking a review of module imports from Chinese companies in those four countries. Auction claims that Asian cell and module manufacturers include parts made by Chinese manufacturers to keep their costs down, essentially circumventing existing anti-dumping and countervailing tariffs. As if the U.S. solar development industry didn't have enough recent supply chain issues, this one may radically hurt the industry, as close to 80% of today's crystal silicon panel imports emanate from those four nations. Abigail Ross Hopper, President and CEO of the Solar Energy Industries Association commented in a statement that, quote, this misstep will have a devastating impact on the U.S. solar market at a time when solar prices are climbing and project delays and cancellations are adding up. Now let's move to hydrogen. Siemens Energy just rolled out plans to construct a, quote, multi-gigawatt PEM electrolyzer facility in Berlin, with the first one gigawatt up and running by 2023 and using a highly automated facility to be built on an existing production hall that Siemens currently uses to manufacture turbines that are capable of burning methane and hydrogen blends. Siemens is by no means the first to announce a gigascale type of electrolyzer factory. At least eight other outfits to date are in that game, with an announced total of 17 gigawatts and climbing. Switching over to electric mobility, here's one many folks probably never anticipated, a Vietnamese automobile manufacturing company coming to the United States. Well, Vietnamese EV OEM VinFast has announced construction of a first U.S. factory in North Carolina, slated to produce electric cars, buses, and the supporting batteries. Build out of the factory starts this year with actual production of about 150,000 vehicles per annum, including SUVs, from a first phase that's scheduled in 2024. A further expansion may grow that facility up to 250,000 cars per year, all dedicated for sale in North American markets. Another Asian company, Korea's LG Energy Solutions, is also in the electromobility game here in the U.S. and just announced another battery factory in North America, this one in Arizona. The $1.4 billion plant will be dedicated to manufacture of cylindrical cells for use in EVs. Planned annual capacity is around 11 gigawatt hours, and construction is scheduled to start in the second quarter of this year, with mass production beginning second half of 2024. To make more batteries in the U.S., industry is going to need to access more critically important minerals. And to that end, President Biden last week invoked the Defense Production Act, which is intended to spur more domestic mining and processing of the minerals that go into lithium-ion batteries in vehicles and in the grid. This helps set the stage by authorizing the Defense Department to conduct feasibility studies. But it doesn't exactly put us on a wartime footing. Well, those are the stories for this, the first week of April 2022, and we look forward to seeing you again next week.